The very soul of Gotham City is hanging in the balance, and the question still remains, who will inherit the mantle of the Bat? Well, let's hop into the pages of Batman Beyond White Knight issue number 7 and find out together, shall we? Well, now isn't this interesting? This issue actually opens up with a very thematically important flashback. It's the night that the Flying Graysons died and the night that Bruce Wayne decided to take a young dick in. Fans of color theory will, of course, note that everything important in this scene is draped in a very particular shade of Nightwing blue. It's also here, too, we're reminded once again that the sidekick lineage in the White knight verse is different than the main DC universe. Turns out Dick was always a fan of Batman and Robin, which is why he took the name Robin as his stage name. All this time later, young Bruce is still beating himself up for the supposed death of Jason, and he hopes that if he could take Dick in, give him a family, a home, a reason to live, that he'd be honoring Jason's memory. It's actually Alfred who's the really reluctant one here. Asking Bruce point blank if it really is a family unit he's after, or if he's trying to build some sort of battalion. Now, back in the story's present, which is still very much our future, Bruce and Dick had actually managed to bury the hatchet and finally reunite at the end of the previous issue, only for Dick to be fatally wounded at the hands of the newly christened Blight. It's here that Terry actually swoops on in and promises to cover Bruce's escape. Terry, of course, now fully knowing the truth about his father's death and the role that Derek Powers played in all of it. Terry as Batman puts up a very valiant fight, but unfortunately even his super advanced suit can only take so many nuclear punches before it starts to give out on him. Worse still, Derek had worked out a contingency in case something like this should happen. Using Jackie Napier's Leet Hacksaw skills, he's able to take control of Terry's suit remotely. In doing so, sicking him against his will on a fleeing Batman, Bruce is doing everything in his power to make sure that the radiation doesn't seep inside Dick's suit and cause any more damage. Furthermore, it's at this point in the story the other characters like Barbara start to realize that Bruce hasn't been alone this whole time and that he's actively been assisted by the joke Ochre Artificial Intelligence. More on that in a minute. The new flying Batmobile is forced to make a crash landing on the GCPD roof. Barbara and the others end up spiriting Dick away for medical care while Bruce himself opts to stay behind and deal with Terry. It's a fight he knows full well he can't win. He's too old, too injured, and going up against technology that's just way too advanced. Thankfully, though, we end up seeing another one of this series' big themes in action, and that is that Batman never had to be Batman on his own. He was always able to share the load with not just one sidekick, but multiple generations of sidekicks who come to his aid. Hell, the Bat family is only growing bigger and more colorful by the minute, too. You see, it's at this point the Jack Napier AI actually swoops on in and manages to save Terry from Derek's programming by uploading himself into the suit. Not only does this mean that Terry is safe, but Jack is actually able to show himself to the rest of the good guys too, making use of the suit's hollow projector. Yes, the suit had a hollow projector in it. In fact, Jack probably ends up stealing the entire issue with his summation, saying, wow, isn't it amazing that all of these different story threads all converged right here, right now, at this very moment. The strained lovers, Dick and Barbara, forgave each other and realized how much they meant to one another. Batman went back into the field to try and save his side kicks, but in the end, it's his sidekicks who saved him. Then, of course, there's still the matter of Terry and whether or not he should actually keep the suit. People like Jason think they should take it away from him, but Bruce knows different. After all, he's come a long way, matured, and learned some uncomfortable truths about himself. He wants to be different, Bruce. He doesn't want to be overbearing. He doesn't want to push people away anymore. He wants to let people in. He wants to share the load and actually do some real healing. In fact, the whole Bat family needs to heal. Trauma and misery may have brought them together but it need not be the thing that holds them together forever. And with that, the good guys are all in one place and making plans to finally take Derek Powers down once and for all. They're going to split into teams for a major four-pronged assault on the Powers Wayne building. It's going to be difficult because obviously Blight has superpowers now, but even before that, he had a whole high-tech army at his disposal. We get an oh-so-classic and oh-so-cinematic hero shot wherein everyone walks in a straight line before eventually we get a Sean Gordon Murphy spin on the classic Batman Beyond Return of the Joker line wherein Bruce says to Terry, the suit doesn't make you who you are, it's the other way around. And so that was Batman Beyond the White Knight issue number 7 everybody and once again I really am enjoying this series. I'm actually a couple weeks late to covering this one because of the holidays and everything which is a shame because this is a really good penultimate issue that wraps up plenty of the storylines and sets the stage for the big finale. The big secret weapon of not just Beyond the White Knight but I think the entire White Knight 
series really is the concept of growth and change. This is a Bruce Wayne who is more introspective than he normally is in the main universe. He's actively trying to work on himself and he's actively trying to make himself a better person for the benefit of all of those around him. Also, I know there's still one issue left and I could still very much end up totally eating these words. I am genuinely surprised that Jack Napier didn't go all Joker and betray Batman again. Hell, it seems like he's actively a member of the team now, him and Harley, which I did not expect. But it's just one of those very many new, fresh, and interesting takes that makes the White Knight verse such an interesting universe in and of itself, and one of those reasons that I keep seeing myself coming back to it. Overall, I give this one a very positive 8 out of 10. Hey there everyone, Cape Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps drive engagement and helps me out too. Also, if you are a patron, which you can become for as little as a dollar a month, you will get exclusive content that no one else can ever see, and you'll get to see the Comic Multiverse podcast before anyone else too. You can check out all this and more down in the description. And until next time everyone, this has been Cape Jewel, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.